Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. In studio with me is Dr. Christy Heck, joining us on the program to talk about drug-resistant epilepsy. Thanks for joining us on the program, Dr. Christy Heck. Thank you for having me. You're here to talk about drug-resistant epilepsy. Is that your area of expertise? Has it always been a passion of yours? Yes, it is. I've actually been... Um, managing patients and working in an academic epilepsy center my entire career. So um, it's what I do and opportunities to inform the public are really important to me. Um, As a team, we tend to um, manage patients. Um, Most of the patients that come to our epilepsy center um, have um, what we call medically refractory epilepsy. They've tried numerous medications. They either are not getting seizure control or they're having adverse side effects to medications. And uh, they look to us for um, innovative ways in terms of managing their their chronic illness. Are these medications always the go-to in the beginning? Yeah, and we have a lot of medication options. I think the problem is uh, medication definitely is the first line of therapy. Um, The problem is that we don't really have a way to predict how people are going to respond, either with respect to their um, um, seizure control or with respect to what kinds of side effects they might um, experience on any medication. And so oftentimes, you know, it's a, it has to be a real um, close relationship between the provider and the patient and family to really communicate back and forth about how things are going, even between visits to make sure that um, bad side effects are are, um, sort of cut off at the pass and and you go a different direction. I often tell patients, I wish I had a little machine I could put their thumb in that would tell me exactly what medication and what dose they would need to control their seizures. And it wouldn't give them any side effects, but we don't have that machine. So it's really trial and error, which can be a real um, frustrating experience as a patient. On uh, average, in your experience, what is the time frame that we're looking at for this um, uh, this hit and miss pinpointing the right medication and dosage for a particular patient? Yeah, that's a, a good question. And oftentimes what happens is that patients just... Um, are given a new prescription every time they get walk in the door if something is not quite right. And in the literature, if you look at the time of diagnosis to the time control or the time of, of um, getting referred to an epilepsy center, it can be years. In fact, our experience, at least 15 years sometimes for patients to actually be referred when really after trying two medications, um, and have them, um, that really is the standard of being of necess- necessitating a, a higher level of care to an epilepsy center. So, unfortunately, many patients get stuck in sort of a wheel um, out in the community where they just aren't getting the care that they need. VNS therapy. I, I hear you talking about you know upwards of fifteen years before that proper fit is found. Meanwhile, uh, the, the problem is progressing. Things are getting worse. Right. Uh, their uh, quality of life is, is deteriorating because right. of this hit and miss. Um, after a couple of tries of a medication, should a brand new therapy or a non-medication therapy be considered? Right. Um, you know, I think that one of the goals of uh, educating is to make sure that patients are advocating for themselves or their families are advocating for them and to realize that, you know, there are guidelines um, in my professional world that say if a patient is not seizure free after two trial of two medications or they've had excessive side effects after two medications, they really need to be referred to an epilepsy center and epilepsy centers exist across the country. Um, and, you know, are, are places where the next step is considered, and that could be a consideration for epilepsy surgery, where we remove the seizure focus. It could be a consideration for a number of devices, including the vagus nerve stimulator, um, a deep brain stimulator, or a responsive neurostimulator. So we have 
a lot of options um, beyond just medications. But um, the key is get, getting the patients to the right care. When these patients are, are finally, uh, I guess, um, referred to you, are they always uh, a good candidate for VNS or some other type of uh, alternative therapy other than medication? Or are sometimes do you discover that maybe there is a little another medication that they might want to try before your therapy? So um, patients are are interesting. Some patients will be very motivated to think about epilepsy surgery or an implantable device. Other patients are just nervous about any kind of, you know, major um, operative procedure. And so oftentimes you, you really have to read the patient and really get them on board. And that takes some time and development of a relationship to really um, convince them, you know, what the right thing is. Many of them um, will at least allow us to gather data about their seizures, which is is a, a big commitment on the patient's part. They have to come into the hospital and um, have continuous epilepsy monitoring, which means, you know, being in a, a private room with a camera and um, mm-hmm. EEG electrodes on their head and having their seizures um, be precipitated by removing their medications. Um, and that's a scary thing in a kind of contradictory to what they would think, you know, we would want to do. But the point is that we get a very clear diagnosis and a clear understanding of what the seizures are, where they might be coming from, or what kind of syndrome of epilepsy is happening to them. And that clarity is extremely important in terms of tailoring their medications or offering them other um, other types of uh, therapies. So I think that's a really important thing to do. Is um, VNS the, the latest therapy for uh, drug-resistant epilepsy? VNS has been around, um, it was actually FDA approved in 1997. It's been around a long time. Um, We have um, sort of, you know, when we were doing the initial clinical trials before FDA approval, we were very focused on a specific type of epilepsy, which is called focal onset epilepsy, meaning there's a single or two foci in the brain where the seizures are being generated. Um, where the patient may not be a candidate for surgery. They may not be able to have a piece of their brain removed to cure their seizures. And so this was the very first um, device where we felt we had an inroad that was not medication, had very limited side effects, um, and was very w- well tolerated. Since FDA approval, we have been using this device um, as we have with medications and other things as well, um, in an off-label fashion in all kinds of epilepsy. And in my experience, um, it's a really terrific um, tool for us to help reduce um, the seizure burden in many patients. Is there a place that uh, our listeners can go online and get some more information about uh, epilepsy in general, uh, drug-resistant epilepsy uh, specifically, and also about VNS therapy? And I believe uh, Centiva, is is that another uh, a different yeah, therapy? Yeah, so, so over the years, um, Levanova has um, developed the VNS device such that the, more, the newer models now have sensors that pick up the heart rate. And in many cases, not all, but many cases of epilepsy, patients' heart rate will go up when they're in the midst of a seizure or starting into a seizure. And in those cases, um, if the sensor picks that um, increase in heart rate, uh, it will turn the device on um, on demand. So it doesn't even require somebody to activate the device or to sort of hope that the device kind of turns on at you know, uh, in an opportune moment, it actually picks up the heart rate and, and does it on its own. So it's, um, it's not the perfect um, um, biomarker, I would say, for um, seizures because the seizures are actually brain activity, not necessarily heart, and not everybody gets this increase in their heart rate um, during a seizure. But I think a lot of patients do actually get 
um, a nice result from it, having that as a backup. Um, VNS also has a great um, opportunity for patients who have a warning that they're going to have a seizure. They can use a magnet to swipe um, the device and it'll turn on on demand as well. And so those kinds of things are, are great because patients and their families have something they can do that will often shorten the seizure and make it less intense and get them back into their regular routine much quicker because they won't be ex as exhausted and um, have this prolonged postictal state. And where can we go online and learn more? So online, I highly recommend epilepsy.com. Um, this is the um, official website for the Epilepsy Foundation um, nationally. And there are lots of opportunities through epilepsy.com to look at um, various device therapies, including VNS. And um, it's a wonderful resource for patients and families just in general. Well, I thank you for joining us here on the program, Dr. Heck, and um, hopefully we'll talk again. Thank you very much for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.